Hi, this is James of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And this is a continuation of our um, our internet video show here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey about Sarah Palin's stupid remark recently in the news about uh, Barack Obama's uh, health reform plan being evil. And this is the second half. Now, uh, Reverend Bill, um, what you were saying before about don't try to make sense out of anything Sarah Palin says because she has no she has no explanation to why she said health care reform under the Democrats is evil. And and then th then we we discussed also that Republicans, conservatives in general, do not have any proven scientific hard evidence to support anything they say. No, they have no plan. And <clears throat> when you when you follow the money trail, you understand that the big insurance companies don't like anything about this reform plan because it's going to it's going to cut into their gouging. It's going to cut into their uh, we don't want to pay for that. They just flat we want out you to have a pay 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 us a big deductible, and then when you when you have a problem, we don't want to cover that. And the already 29 to 30 percent of every dollar you give to an insurance company right. is paid uh, administrative costs. And that, that's waste. That's like those uh, charity. Medicare only has two percent. That's like those charity organizations, like the United Way. Yes. They have a. Uh, uh, um, 75 percent or so they have a huge administrative cost that your your do donated money is going towards yeah right so they uh, they just flat out are greedy and selfish and they don't want to pay it they don't want change they don't but they their families are well covered they're well covered well that's like the Wall Street bankers and stuff it's the same thing right they got all the money they're being paid they're still getting their bonuses what is Main Street got? We yeah. don't need, you know, Gary Knoll said the other day, he agreed with me, that I've been screaming about this kind of crap for years. Right. So has he. We don't need Wall Street. In our history, way back when, when we didn't have Wall Street, we were doing very well. We don't need a stock market. It's only gambling. People with money, they gamble. Yeah. They, they, what does that produce? It produces nothing. They need to amuse themselves. Yeah. Like that Star Trek... Uh, one with the, uh, the, the what were the Triskelions or whatever, the thing, the three things that look like mushrooms, oh. who were so uh, advanced in their brains and everything that they had nothing to do anymore but gamble. That was their only uh, thing in life. They had all the That's answers to everything else. Yeah. They're, they're bored. Now I heard, um, I was told recently that um, speaking of double standards among the elitists in this country, uh, the military. Military personnel have a particular insurance plan um, where, okay, it for the most part sucks. I mean, I think our servicemen and women deserve a lot better than what they get when they come home from war. But supposedly, the the wives of these servicemen, uh, once the the husband, the military person dies for whatever reason, whether it be uh, uh, due to active duty or whatever, when they die, then the surviving wife um, gets, continues to receive the uh, medical benefits under the, the military plan until she gets remarried. Once she gets remarried, she, she gets nothing. Bye -bye. Now... But, on the other hand, I heard, and I don't know how true this is, that a congressman or senator, if they're elected and they only serve one or two days in office and then they get booted, they continue to receive free health care for the rest of their lives. How about a pension? A pension. Now, now I don't know how true that is. I was told that they're entitled to wow. free health care even if they work one or two days in Washington. But what about the poor 
What about the families of the military personnel? I mean, there's a there's a clause there where, okay, she continues with her her late husband's military health coverage, but if she gets remarried, she she doesn't get it anymore. What if he has children? Surviving well, don't, don't try to make sense of these things because the problem is that since like 1934, lobbyists have been writing our legislation, not our Congress people. And they write this stuff in for their own benefit. So if you're going to try to make sense of these things, it's not going to work. You know, because it's always somebody else's interest that is involved here. It's, it's not the common people, the American people, or anything. It's none of that. But this none sounds so much like the uh, the statement you make when you call conservatives and, and neoconservatives counterfeit Christians, because it's a hypocrisy when you say, uh, oh, anything that the elitists, do, anything that the career, the career politicians in Washington that are elitists, you know, it's okay for us to get everything for free. It's okay for corporate CEOs to get bailout, to get welfare, okay, which is like socialism. They like socialism. For themselves. For themselves. But when the little guy needs a little help, when the little guy asks for a little help, it's a big catastrophe. Something this insignificant for a, a man who put his life on the line, maybe got his legs blown off in Iraq, or, or got killed in the line of duty. Seems to me that and, the... And they take away the, the insurance as soon as she remarries. It seems to me that the conservative actually doesn't want that kind of person to come back. He would rather have them die on the battlefield. The little it's much guy. easier. It's easier for the little guy yeah. or the poor schlub to drop dead. Yeah. See, you see how it is? Everything for them is okay. Yes, because they believe... If you're talking in, in the Christian context, right. they believe that they are blessed by God. That's why they're rich. And the they believe place. they're talking to God. Well, and they believe true. that, uh, like what Palin said, Sarah Palin said about uh, a national health care being evil. How could it be evil if the Bible tells people, you know, tells the rich to help the poor? You know, the poor, the poor, the poor. The poor are the priority. So they're, that sh proves that they're hypocrites and they're counterfeit Christians. But if they're deceived, how are they going to see that? And, of course, you can't argue that with them because their minds right. are already, right. it's like concrete. And, and the biggest problem is they're in power. That's the big problem. That's the big problem. They are in power. <laughs> That's why support the independent candidate. The two-party system is a lie, a fake, a phony, and a fraud. That's it. But uh, we have so a little... So politics itself. Politics in general. Mm -hmm. We have a little time? One minute? Or no? One minute. Okay. I'm going to close out by talking about the newsletter. Newsletter Censored, founded in 1977 by this gentleman, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Hard-hitting truth you're not going to hear anywhere in today's mainstream media or read in the mainstream press. It's information that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? And the very best way to support this organization is to get your annual subscription to Newsletter Censored right now by going to www.newslettercensored.com. By the way, sir, is this painting almost done? No. All right, so don't show it yet. No. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll wait. Get it right now. The best way to be a part of the organization and to support this work, we need funding. Get the newsletter. All right, we'll see you.